All right, there we go. Hi everyone, how's it going? Team here, and this is BXJS development live stream. Finally, once um, after I don't know what two months, three months. It's been too long since I've done one of those, and I guys, uh, I promised you guys to do a Svelte live stream. So we are going to be doing exactly that today. Um, so we're going to be taking a look at Svelte three and Sapper, which is you're familiar with React world or Vue.js world and React that would be Next.js and in uh, Vue world that would be Nux.js. So Sapper does pretty much the same for Svelte. And we're gonna be using that to build a basic RSS reader. I thought, you know, like building another um, Hacker News client is relatively boring. So we're gonna make it a bit more generic and build an overall RSS reader, including Hacker News RSS feed. So. Yeah, that's the general gist of it. Uh, hey, Carlos, welcome to the stream. Um, so I'm going to be using my Windows as usual for the development here. Um, I think so we're going to get a terminal here. I think I'm, so I'm not going to be using VSL today because after the la latest uh, Windows 10 update, for some reason, it's kind of semi broken for me. So I don't want I don't want to risk it on stream. I'm just going to be using the Windows bits. Uh, but yeah, but eventually just need to figure out what broke during the update and fix it. All right, um, so we got Svelte, we got Sapper. I guess let's get started with Sapper. I believe they use this digit or digit. I'm not sure how to correctly read that. Um, the scaffolding tool that is based on Git basically. So it just takes the Git repository and clones it and does some additional stuff. So pretty straightforward, really. And um, yeah. Um, uh, hey Tal, thank you very much for your Twitch subscription. Uh, really appreciate that. So hey back all, welcome to the stream. All right, so we got the dig it and we're just gonna run npx dig it uh, roll up. This is exactly what we want and let's call it sapper RSS, I guess. RSS reader, maybe just something like this, right? So theoretically that should work just fine. Svelte 3 is not a game. <laughs> Okay, let me uh, open that folder now. So we got bxjs, we got sap reader, there we go. We got our project scaffolded real nice. I believe the canonical way of using Svelte is actually with tabs and uh, basically the settings that I don't like. So we're probably gonna be changing it. Um, real MMORPG, well, yeah, I mean, you, you could say that. <laughs> All right, so I think, uh, so we scaffolded the project. We need to CD into it, run npm install. Okay, sure, let's do that, npm install. And then we need to run npm run dev. Maybe make it a bit bigger so you guys can see what the hell is going on here. So we done npm run dev and open localhost 3000. Let us do that. Okay, npm run dev, there we go. So we're gonna paste that. We're gonna start this, sapper dev. Okay, so it seems to be working. And uh, that is an amazing image that greets us <laughs> right after scaffolding the project. All right, great success. This seems to be working. Okay, that's a good start. So let's see what we actually get here as a project scaffold. So we got Polka, Serve and Compression as direct dependencies, which means that the server right now is Polka, which is pretty much can be replaced with Express if you want to, but I think in our case, Polka should work just fine. We got surf, which I believe is a static file serving uh, package. And we got compression, which I guess name suggests is probably something like a gzip or whatever. Um, let us see what else do we have here? What do you think about the package bringing Cypress with it? So I'm guessing they use Cypress for testing. So it seems like they have the testing set up and essentially they use Cypress for running the tests, which is, I mean, let's just, I, I never tried actually Cypress, so it might be a good, uh, good, um, good point to do that. So let's do npm test and see. Cypress is not recognized as external. Oh, so you actually need to install it on your own. I see. Okay, so it just has the Cypress config, but it doesn't have it in a dev dependency. That's interesting. Okay, wait a second. Cypress, Cypress JS. Um, I thought it would make sense to add it as a dev dependency, right? Since it's like the. Uh, it's a bit weird that it's not there, but you know what? Okay, uh, npm install save dev. Cypress. Let's just let's just start it ourselves. That should be fine, right? Hopefully it works on Windows. And uh, so there's like two caveats again, you know, since my VSL setup is right now broken, there is uh, so I'm running on Windows, I'm running the node 12 
uh, 3.1 or whatever was the latest version. So I'm just hoping here nothing will break while we use the setup. <laughs> Because this is not how I usually roll, but you know what? It works better than the half broken VSL that just randomly errors out. So yes, I guess I just need to wipe my VSL environment and reinstall it, but whatever. This is not the topic of our stream. So let's see what the Cypress say. Okay, I can see why they decided not to include it in the dev dependencies. That thing is big. I guess it based on the, it is based on the, um, uh, what do you call it? The what was it? Was it Atom or was it Chromium? Uh, okay, that is, I mean, considering I have a one gigabit connection that is taking ages. All right, uh, wait for VSL2. Yes, this is like, as soon as they release VSL2 with a real Linux kernel, this is gonna be the first thing I install. But uh, for now, you know, I gotta work with something and VSL worked okay until the last update. So. Okay, do they have actually a size for this? Uh, open source, blah, 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 blah. Um, I don't know, um, what was it? Package phobia, right? Package phobia, I don't remember. Now shell, right? Cypress, it's probably like a gigabyte or something. Am I gonna kill the package phobia website now with this? Uh, yes, I will. <laughs> All righty then, um, let us, I don't know. NPM package size, uh, bundle phobia. No, that's definitely gonna break it. Okay, you know what, whatever. So I know we know it's big, but it's installed. So let's try running NPM test now. Okay, cool. So verifying Cypress can run, opening Cypress. Is it actually opens UI? Because again, you know, I, I have zero experience with Cypress. So I honestly don't know what we're getting into. I just read a bunch of articles about it and it seemed pretty nice, but Come on, where is it? It's actually gonna open anything? Where's my task manager? Let's let's have a look here. So we got oh, okay. There's some stuff happening. Uh run starting Cypress Electron. Okay, so it is electron based. And it, okay, it runs in headless mode, which is nice. It just runs tests. It actually takes quite a lot of time to warm it up, but uh okay. I mean it works, so that's that's fine for me. Just gonna go with it. Um, do we actually have a git repository here? Scale up status. No, we don't. So we're gonna do git init. And uh, so I'm guessing this Cypress is the tests. Okay, that's like Cypress setup basically. Uh, where are the tests actually? Routes, blog. No, this is navigation, I guess. Okay, this is fixtures, this is integrate. Oh, I guess the integration tests, plugins is Cypress plugins and support is, what the hell is that? Uh, shows you to write uh, no, various custom commands and overwrite existing one. Oh, so this is again the Cypress part and this is also, okay. Uh, so I guess this is the test basically. So we visit, we check for H1. And yes, now my ESLint and Prettier complain because it's all formatted with uh, tabs. So you know what, let's just resave that. There we go. Um, yes, I'm probably gonna resave all of the files because I, as you might know, I prefer, um, huh, I, yeah, I prefer basically Prettier and spaces formatting to everything else. So we're gonna close that. Okay, this is the folder that we don't care about, I believe, right? Because it's not, it's ignored if I remember correctly. Yep, so this is the build results. And right, this looks fine. So let us, you know what, let me just, uh, oh, okay. So I guess swelled files by default are formatted with tabs. I mean, I can live with that, but it just feels, you know what? Um, let me, let me just do this, Get Hey, ah, damn it, I, it wasn't committed, right? Ugh, okay, um, so I'm gonna add dot editor config. So I'm gonna add an editor config and doo -doo -doo. it's a bit weird that it doesn't come with this because this is sort of the de facto way of, um, of configuring stuff, right, for editing. So we want, we want uh, Java, I mean, we, we actually want everything, right? Uh, I don't know, do we want everything? No, we don't want everything. We want JS and we want Svelte. And we wanna say that it end style is tabs. This is what we want. So theoretically right now, if I reopen JSON as well, actually. 
JSON. One this. Um, format now. Nah, formats. Yes. No. Why are you not formats? That does prettier over IDS. Uh, okay. <laughs> this is the thing that I never actually wondered. Prettier uh, editor config. Do we need a prettier config here instead? Consider respecting. Yes, this is exactly what I would expect to happen, but I guess this is not their goal, right? Do, 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 do. Let me think. Package prettier RC. Okay, so yeah, I guess we need prettier RC as well. Uh, why not? Let's add that. So far, we've been doing the um, organizational things instead of writing code, but that's that's also okay. Um, right, basic JSON. Yeah, let's let's go with JSON. So we can say trading comma ES5. Um, uh, yes, ES5 sounds fine. Tab with error format with tabs option yet. Sharing configuration, basic config. Uh, semi single quotes, uh, semi yes, please semicolons. I do like them in my code. Where is there like a tabs for uh, what? No, tabs. No, okay, it doesn't have to wait. I thought prettier knows how to format with tabs. With I mean, we might just disable it. Options, uh, print tab with tabs, use tabs. Okay, there we go. That should work, right? Use tabs, true. All right, so theoretically, there we go. Now it's formatting with tabs. Hey, Donna, welcome to the stream. All right, so we configured that stuff. We configured that stuff. What? Why do you now switch to the view for it? <laughs> what are you doing now? Okay, uh, use tabs, semi true, yes. Editor config. I guess we can just make this. This should, like, why is all of a sudden started formatting with. Uh, that just feels weird. Okay, then editor config. No, wait, it's like the God damn it, editor. Why do you have to be like this? Prettier. I mean, I, I think I have my um, where's the project? Let's do the workspace settings and uh, indent. I believe I have my formatter set to actually be uh, prettier by default, but uh, prettier use tabs. Yes, there we go. So let's try this. Are you gonna? No. Format documents. Yep. That's. Oh right. You know what? That might actually be the problem of not not prettier because I installed this wealth extension which might have a completely different um, set of configs and might be formatting stuff with the different stuff. Uh, yes, I'm really good at speaking today. Okay, let's see, blah, 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 blah. Right, uh, doesn't seem like it actually does anything. Okay, that is a bit weird. Right, um, so we're gonna delete VS Code config uh, all. Let us... You know what? I'm just gonna do it in a stupid way. I'm just gonna clear everything and be like, okay, screw you, whatever, format it the way you like. I honestly no longer care. Because <laughs> we spent too much time trying to figure this stuff out. You know what? Screw this. All right. Um, what do you want? Options prettier exit page, please. Yes. How is it? What? Okay, whatever. So we got our project, right? I stopped it. That's why it's not running. So let's do npm run dev. And we got uh, a bunch of pages actually. So it's not just one page, it's created. There's some components. This is a navigation component, which is our header, I guess, right? And okay, so we got this segment thing, which I assume is export led segment. Uh, so export this export clause means that this is the property in terms of React review or whatever so that anyone who uses this component should be able to assign it when, when it's used. So basically we should be able to see here a navigation thing. No, not here, okay. Layout, is it in layout? Yes, it's in layout, there we go. And the segment is exported from the layout. So I guess this is some sort of um, sapper thing that is automatically passed to uh, whatever you say, right? Um, so we got the navigation, we got this, we got the main slot. So this is our template, looks fine. We got about page, 
I assume the routing is done automatically in the same manner the next year does it. And we got the blog. Uh, so what is this? This is ordinary. You generate this data from markdown files in your repo. This file is called underscore posts rather than posts because we don't want to create blog slash post route. Okay, so if, if you prefix route with underscore, it will not create a route. That's interesting. No, it's not React. Yes, this is Svelte and this is Sapper. Uh, we're basically trying it out. Okay, so this is this is a mock data for the posts, right? And then we got uh, a blog slash index. So I assume this is exactly this one. And I guess it just lists the blogs, right? Okay, yeah, that seems straightforward. And we got slug svelte. So it has it seems to have the nested parameter matching. So basically, you don't have to create routing on your own. You can just use the file names to generate routing. This is I, I believe this was an RFC in Next.js for ages and it's still not shipped. But it seems to be working quite well here. Uh, yes, this is a single page application. As you can see here, it's all done dynamically. Um, I believe it also comes with the server side rendering and everything. So if we actually have a look at the source code, you will see the full page rendered. And then there's the sapper hydration information that basically uh, makes it interactive, which is also super nice. All right. Uh, yeah, so I guess we could just kill a bunch of things. Um, I mean, single page app and universal app is more or less the same. Uh, no, I mean, not quite, right? So universal app means that it also has server side rendering. So yes, universal would be a better term in this case. Okay, so um, let us, there's an error page here. What is it? What does it do? So if I say type 404, blah, blah, blah. okay, so we got a nice error here. Cool. Uh, yeah, I guess we can kill the blog thing. Just move it to the trash. We got the nav component. Um, do we do we care about navigation in this case? Let me think of it. We don't re like so. What what are we, we're gonna have an RSS reader, right? So we need one page that's gonna have a list of feeds. That's gonna have a list of articles that we fetched and have buttons to add remove feeds. That's basically it. So I guess we don't really need a navigation component, uh, but for now I'm just gonna leave it here and instead of this UL Lee, maybe maybe I'm just you know I'm just gonna kill that and change this to be simple RSS reader, right? So just make it a header out of it. There we go. Not quite as pretty, but uh, so a um, let's do Lee P. Do the paragraph tag here and change the styling to a paragraph. Uh, it should be a bit nicer. There we go. Okay. Um, it seems to be overly large, but we can tweak the styles later. That's not a big deal. We don't select it. We don't have that actually. The cool part about Svelte actually. So Svelte on its own is a UI framework like React or Vue or Angular, right? But instead of um, working in, in your, you know, your typical way when you have the view or react JS included, and then you build on top of that, Svelte is built around the compiler. So it actually, once you pass in the dot Svelte files, it understands all the things that you have in here. So for example, right now, it's actually telling us that we have the CSS that is unused. So it understands that we have the selected class and selected after. But since I removed the HTML that used it, it can it can reason basically that okay, you actually don't need this CSS, so will be automatically stripped when we compile, and you can also remove it safely, right? Which is pretty damn awesome to be honest. And also says that segment is exported, but I guess uh, in place there's any type. Okay, this is the uh, TypeScript thing, but we don't actually use it, so we can just kill it, right? So we got this thing going. All right, and now we can, I guess, start editing it. So we don't need about page either. We can kill that. There's our index page. Um, so we got the service. Well, okay, this is the head. Sapper RSS reader. Let's just rename it a bit. I guess let's just use this name everywhere because it makes more sense. There we go. And we don't care about this anymore, right? So we just want, I guess, let's just uh, add some div content here, right? So it's going to be this stuff. And uh, what is it? Something is failing. Um, about cannot resolve about. Where are you trying to resolve about from? 
why is it trying to open about when it's not even there? Um, manifest JS is it because okay, is it has some cache or something? Let me try to restart that. Hey Tim, welcome to the stream. All right, so we got unused CSS selectors warnings, but it seems to be working fine. Okay, there we go. So I guess dynamically removing files doesn't work that great with them. So let me just do do not disturb. All right, so we got the content, we got this stuff going. Um, I guess in terms of sapper, do we actually need the, any docs here? It seems pretty straightforward. So I guess we might come back to them if we have any more in-depth questions, but um, actually I would just focus on Svelte docs. And in this case, what do we want? We actually want to do um, two column layouts. So I'm gonna pop out the there we go, the dev tools here, maybe make it a bit larger. All uh, right, so we have this main thing, we have the div. I guess we can just uh, do it ourselves, like do a tiny CSS flex box thingy. So div, and this is gonna be, I guess, let's write, um, okay, ULE, and this is gonna be entry one. Just gonna mock it basically so that we can see how it looks. And is it, what? what is going on with my VS code? What are those things? Okay, that does not look quite good. Let me just maybe reopen that. There we, no, that's the, wow. Oh, is it because of the unused CSS? The code highlighting is going bonkers on me. Okay, can I just kill all the style? Will you be happy after that? What is happening? So one of my gripes, and it seems to be still here, is that the Svelte plugin for VS Code seems to be quite janky for some reason. Uh, I'm not sure if that's that's the cause or maybe something else, but this just seems to be completely broken. You know what? Uh, let me just do this. What was the what was a reload window? Yes, reload window, please. I just reload everything. Yes, now it seems to be working correctly. Okay, cool. And if so this is gonna be our content, right? Save this and uh, cool. So now we have this. So the divs, now we just have to style them a bit. Um, okay, yeah, the dev tools did not update properly because dynamic reload, what? Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, right, because, the, oh no, I didn't stop it, but since I did the window reload, it killed the terminal thing. Makes sense. Okay, there we go. So we got our content over here. We got the entries, we got the content over here. Let me just maybe move this to the bottom so we can actually see it nicer. All right, so we need to uh, change those things and say, okay, this is gonna be class um, fit list and this is gonna be class um, articles. Let's just call it this way, right? So here we got fit list. I think we also need um, class container. So duh, 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 container, container is what? No, what are you doing? Stop it. All right, so display, um, whoops, flex is what we want. And then here is gonna be display flex. And um, yeah, I need dot articles two articles and this is going to be no god damn it what are you doing display flex there we go i should really spend some time and configure how to suggest in my editor uh okay so we got this all right so we got this kind of working and this seems okay ish right so we just need some tiny additional styling and uh, we can just do it here to make like basically make it visual, right? So this is this is the way that I typically edit CSS, which I guess is way, you know, far from best, but um, this is how I typically do it. So let's add some padding. Yeah, well, let's go with pixels, you know what? <laughs> okay, so we got the padding and uh, I guess padding here wouldn't hurt as well. So we got some padding going on and this actually should be flex one, right? So this should uh, take the whole space. Maybe, maybe, wait a second. So yeah, I guess that should be fine. So, okay, so we got padding to feed lists, padding 10 PX. It's gonna be flex one so that it stretches everywhere. We're gonna add some padding as well. 
uh, now that we have this uh, so what do we need to do we need to um, render a list of feeds and have an add button and have a remove button right uh, and have a reload button so there should be three buttons here Let's just add them, I guess. Uh, so button, this is gonna be um, add, remove and reload. So we got this. Okay, that looks completely terrible, but <laughs> we're gonna fix it in a second, that's fine. So yeah, okay, so this flex, we need flex direction uh, column, right? There we go. So this is the flex list, uh, feed list is gonna be flex direction column. Uh, note that the classes are localized to a specific component or page. So even if you use the same class names across the app, they won't collide, which is quite handy. All right, so we got add, remove, reload. We got our lists and I guess we can start by implementing the add button. So how do we do that? Um, is there a way to do models in this well? So Svelte, let's see, Svelte, Svelte 3 model. Gotta be, okay, there's an existing library uh, for that, but I imagine there should be a simple way of doing it, right? We could look at the source code and see how it's done, but I like, considering how simple that framework is, it should be relatively easy to do. Model close. That is not exactly what I wanted. I guess we can just roll our own. Uh, maybe not even model. So what can we do? We can click ads that would show like a panel on top or something. So yeah, you know what, let's do this. So we got this container for stuff and then we got this div. Um, that is That is gonna be our adding thing. Input type text. And value is gonna be HTTP RSS. Fit, uh, Svelte example models. Oh, yeah, that is handy, thank you very much. All right, okay, let me just, uh, it's open in the wrong thing. There we go. I remember I've seen that somewhere, so yeah, definitely. Okay, that is, um, I probably should allow JavaScript over here. There we go. All right, uh, so how do they do this? They have this model thing and it is create this. Okay, so you, I mean, we don't really need event dispatchers, but we can probably copy. Nah, that's, you know what? Let's 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 roll a simpler version of it. This <laughs> seems too complicated. All right, so we got the text and we got, again, two buttons. Okay, and um, cancel, I guess. Add and cancel would be better and we can do something like this. And then just say this is class um, add feed. And then we're gonna say, okay, add feed is, God damn it, stop it, display flex and flex direction row by default, so we're fine. And then we just say that this is gonna be, um, class uh, feed input. Now take this and I'm gonna say feed, oh, whoop, feed input is gonna, god damn it. Feed input is gonna be, uh, gonna be what? Let me think for a second. We want flex one, right? So this is what I want. I wanted to stretch basically. All right. I mean, you know, there's a few, <laughs> There's a few more styles options to go to make it look pretty, but uh, this looks fine. So now what we need to do is we need to say, da, 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 we need to add a script tag. And we need to say, so we have uh, show add form, right? And it's gonna be false. Right, so the next question is, how do we if block? All right, there we go. So we use this kind of syntax and say, right, if um, show add form and uh, slash if, there we go. So this is basically now it should no longer be here, cool. And now we need to bind an event, element bindings, uh, element binding, binding related binding value, component DOM events, there we go, this is what we want. On event name handler, cool. So that seems very straightforward. So let's say um, toggle add form. This is our 
function, right? And the cool thing about Svelte is the way that it handles the value changes. So essentially all we have to do is we have to actually say this, right? So we don't even have to do any manual work for binding it or, you know, doing anything like that. And then for the button, we just say on uh, click and uh, it's going to be a toggle. So if I didn't screw anything up, theoretically, it should work. There we go. Cool. And uh, essentially, we can do the same to cancel. And uh, we I mean, we should add this one. So remove should actually be on our entry, right? So it should be over here. Um, and add should be add RSS to list. So let's call it this way. And then add this, I guess this actually can be const. It's not like we're going to be modifying them. So add RSS to list and um, we have to have a look at what kind of... All right, we have to bind the uh, value, right? Binding element binding. There we go. Input bind value name. Uh, boom, 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 bind to allows data to flow the other way from child to parents. Is there uh, two way bindings? I would like, I mean, it's not that hard to do it ourselves, but if they already have two way bindings, two way two-way binding and there's three two-way bindings. Uh, no, this is media element. This is not what I'm, or is it just two-way by default? Is it just if I do this, will it be two-way binding by default? Because if it is, that is kind of awesome. Let's, uh, so RSS URL, right? This is what we want. And uh, this is gonna be placeholder rssfeed.com. And then we do bind value RSS URL. Okay, and we do add RSS to list. Let's do console log RSS URL. There we go. We got this thing going and theoretically, if we now do this and go like ASD, ASD, click add, and it actually worked. Holy shit, <laughs> that was easy. Okay, that is really cool. So we do um, this, right? So first of all, we hide the form. I probably should add some comments at one point, but for now, let's just focus on building this thing. All right, so we got the RSS URL. We got this thing. Uh, let me think for a second. So what do we need to do? I guess at this point, we actually want, we can do this and we can, pre okay, that works fine, right? Um, maybe we should move reload button to the, to the content actually, because that would make more sense, like something like this. Okay. Um, I mean, it's not pretty, but you know, whatever. This makes more sense UI wise, I think. So we can add this. Now we need to do something with the RSS, um, RSS reading, right? So first of all, let me think. First of all, um, use Y combinator, combinator.com, was it? Let us see the um, RSS. Okay, so this is our RSS. I am just going to be lazy and paste it as a default value over here so that once we click on add, we can actually see the whole link and we can click add and then something happens, right? So now we're interested in this something. So basically in this case, I would just go fetch and uh, slash API slash odds. Um, I guess let's just, yeah, let's just go with this way. And then um, MDN fetch, hell if I remember how to do post fetch. So we're just gonna, I'm just gonna refer to the MDN real quick. Uh, where is the article? Um, see also using fetch, there we go. Okay, I always forget the properties you have to pass to it to actually post anything. Okay, so we need method post, right? I guess, yeah, I mean, you know what? Maybe we'll extract it into config later. Don't care about the header. We don't, we care about the body. This is the only bit and body is gonna be URL. It's gonna be RSS URL. Okay. And we can actually make that a sync, right? Say, all right, const results await fetch. 
Okay, and uh, get JSON from it. All right, obviously if we run this now, we should see an error, right? There we go, but it sends the request and, uh, okay, it's actually 404, but I guess this is because we don't have a route definition. So now we have to go into the server part. Server, as I already mentioned, is a basic Polka server, which basically just uses compression to serve for static serving and then SAP or middleware. And uh, Polka JS, we can just go to the Polka documentation and add a few routes. So we really need two route, no wait, three route, no. Wait, is it two routes or three routes? So we need one route for adding RSS, one route that would trigger refresh and one route that would list us the current articles. I guess that should be sufficient. So use, uh, no, we don't need use, we just want get, right? So this is what we want and we're gonna call them get, uh, so it's gonna be API, we're gonna add, what, what, what did I call it again? <laughs> just add, okay, cool. Um, res and I think there is rest or JSON or something. Let me think, JSON, JSON stringify. Uh, yes, rest, no wait, this, uh, send. Okay, there is polka send type. I did, did Luke uh, finally remove the JSON thingy from it? So I guess you have to terminate response early. I guess it's a separate package. Uh, I see, okay. Uh, might be better, or I guess might be easier to actually just go with Express then because I don't feel like fighting with that stuff. So let us do npm rm polka and npm install Express and just roll with Express.js. And uh, we also need, well, um, can we go with, wait a second. We can go with Express or we can go with uh, Fastify, which has everything installed. I believe it should be compatible with Express type of middleware. So let's try Fastify. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. No, that's not what I want. I want the repository, please. Thank you very much. All right, so we got this. We got require Fastify. So doo -doo 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 -doo. import Fastify from Fastify. Uh, Fastify is great. I mean, I've used it in a bunch of projects and it's been really, really good. So yes, we have to invoke it to create the instance. Um, so I guess let's just do con server. It's gonna be Fastify. There we go. And then it's gonna be server gets. I guess we should put that before everything. I think that should work, right? Server listen. Okay. Um, res send. What? Res send. Uh, okay, true. Let's just do it in a stupid way. If I didn't screw anything up, then it's going to be nicer. What advantages do you see in Fastify compared to Express.js? Well, one advantage is the speed, so it's like significantly faster. And the another advantage is that it actually uh, doesn't require to install like, you know, body parser or a bunch of other things to have basic stuff like accepting post requests or, you know, other things like this. Does it not understand how to do the, we have to do it separately, not use, okay. That work. All right, there we go. I think that should work, right? Cool. And if we add that, 404. Why is it 404? Did I screw up something? API add. Oh, because it's not a get, it's a post, right? Of course. There we go. Oh, it actually restarts the server and so on. Holy crap. Okay. <laughs> I don't even need to do that. Awesome. All right, um, adds, adds, where's our, four, again, 404, really? Okay. So we, local in it, API add, it's a post request, we got the URL. So why is it not, um, right, what am I doing wrong? Here's the question. Um, server. Polka, express it again, it should serve static folder using surf. 
Uh, Festival also has a JSON validation. Yeah, I mean, the JSON validation is essentially what makes it really fast because it can uh, assert the shape of request and response using this validation, making the pro parsing the response and request a lot faster. At the, ah, okay, so it's right. Okay, makes sense. So it's basically the same way the, um, um, the next JS works. You have to use the sapper path after everything else. That makes total sense. So theoretically, now we should be able to hear that. Um, can I collapse this? You know what, whatever. Add, add, and uh, still 404. What are you, what is happening? Did it actually, okay, you know what? I don't trust that it restarts the server properly. <laughs> Let's try this again. All right, and no, it's still 404. What is happening now? So we're calling post on API slash add. Yes, this is exactly what it should be, right? So we got compression, we get serve. What, what is going on here? Um, am I using it wrong? Uh, so there's the use middleware. I might be forgetting how the middleware is correctly used here. So use, 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 yes. Helmet register. Okay. So it does support this, so it should be fine. Slashes at the end, but I mean, we don't really have any slash at the end of the URL, right? So it should be, it just split this a bit so it's more readable. Um, let us, you know what, let me just try and do the get API test. I'll just do this test two. Right, so we got API tests, this doesn't work. Test two, this also doesn't work. So it seems like for whatever reason, Sapper is actually uh, overriding all the routes somehow. I'm not even sure how and why. Okay, so I wonder if that's the problem with Fastify or if I'm just doing something wrong with the Sapper. Let's see, so static route, server, routing, pages, server name. Okay, let's see, What's the, what does the doc says? Uh, as normal express, three requirements. It should serve contents from the static. It should call at the end where Sapper is imported from Sapper server. It must listen on the port. Beyond that, you can write the server however you like. Okay, seems straightforward, right? So let's see, Fastify middleware, uh, blah, blah, middleware engine, lifecycle, blah, 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 blah. Okay, Helmet, we recommend using single modules for better performance. Uh, helmet, Fastify Helmet plugin. Remember the middleware can be encapsulated. Uh, we don't care about that. Restrict middleware execution to a certain path. Um, nah, that is not what I want. Express middleware compatibility. Express modifies the prototype of the node core request and response objects heavily. Blah, blah, blah. For course is compatible while passport is not. Okay, so there are some limitations. God damn it. Okay, I guess we... You know what? Let's try going... Let's try going express. It might be that just the middleware is not compatible with Fastify, which is a bit annoying, but... So express and we need body parser, right? So I think... That's the only tool that we need. Um, Express.js. Do we actually need anything else? Uh, getting started API reference for. So yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, express from Express. Server, we're gonna create Express and then we're gonna use use stuff. And um, yeah, I guess let's try it this way. Oh, right, we need the body parser. Body parser, is there, okay. Uh, come on, let me make it a bit larger. Yes, so we can import body parser from body parser. Come on, there we go. And how do you use it? I forgot. Last time I set up Express was quite some time ago. Uh, buh, 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 app use body parser. Okay, so we need those two lines. I guess before everything else. In our case, it is actually server, right? Okay, 
So let us npm run dev. Uh, you can just make app use express JSON. Oh, wait, is that a thing? Express.json. Jump to express. Um, okay. Oh, that's a new thing that has been recently released. That is something I did not know existed. Built in middleware function in express. It parses incoming JSON payloads based on body. Oh, cool. Okay. So you no longer. Why is it not enabled by default? Like, what's the reason of disabling it if it's even shipped together? Okay, then. I mean, that's great. Yeah, let's let's use that. Um, I did not know there was a thing. npm. So we don't need body parser anymore, which is great. Like, the only question is why the hell is that not enabled by default? Because it doesn't make sense. Like, who doesn't want to parse uh, post requests? Okay, um, uh, whoops, not run, I want rm. There we go. Okay, um, npm run dev, theoretically. Very shy API. <laughs> I mean, um, I guess. All right, so we got the test working. Does test two works as well? Okay, and everything after it doesn't work. So, okay, so essentially if I kill that now, this is exactly how I wanted to set up. And if I save it, so test two fails, test one works, perfect. And now if we go over here and send something and uh, in the network, it should be cool. It now finally works. So um, let me think. I guess, I mean, we could just do everything here. Although it will be a bit messy. Uh, but I guess let us abstract it into the server folder. Do we index.js over here? And uh, right, so we got this thing and essentially, I guess we could also set it up as a express middleware, right? Express.js. So, oh, Donna, if you're still watching, I just noticed your donation. Thank you very much as usual, uh, highly appreciate it. Okay, so we got guides, writing middleware. This is what we want. So I guess we should be able to just put everything in a middleware and uh, no, we should be able to just use the router, right? I think it was like the express router thing. It, 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 route path, uh, come on, where's the router example? Yeah, up routes, there we go. Okay, so we can just use this, right? And then we can be like, okay, so we um, export default. It's gonna be a setup function that takes our server and just does stuff to it. So we're gonna be server routes API. And uh, I mean, we don't really need to return it. And then we're gonna have those things here. So, okay. Um, we're gonna have this post and we're gonna have this get. I get, is there a nicer way? Yes, this is exactly what I was looking for. There's gonna be way nicer. So we're gonna import, uh, that was a mistake. Express from Express, right? So we get this but come on. Express thing. Then we create this new router, right? And uh, at the end, we return this router. And can you specify and okay, router. Okay, so then you just do router get and then you app use. Okay, cool. This looks perfect. So and then we're gonna import um, API router from server and just go server use API API router, right? This looks pretty clean. So I just have to fix the router itself. Okay, cool. Um, so it's gonna be router post that is done and then it's gonna be router, router, router get. Cool. Um, yes, please rebuild the whole thing. Uh, what API router? Oh, uh, right. Okay. Because it is not, it is a function import from what do you not like there? Default is not export. What do you mean? Not export it? Oh, okay. I'm an idiot. Um, let me rename that. It is the name clash, right? Because there's a, this is one of the problems of, uh, modules without the endings because there is a server.js and this is what it tried to import, right? And this is why it fails. If we name it, it should start working. There we go. 
and we got our ads pending. Where the shit are you pending? Okay, API. Oh, god damn it. I forgot to clean up the routes. There we go. Try this again. And uh, it's still pending. Why are you still pending? Here's the question. Uh, so we got the post ad, we got the get. And uh, am I? No, I'm not using it correctly, right? It's a function here, actually. There we go. This should fix it. Just restart it real quick. Come on. And there we go. Finally working. Okay, cool. We got this working finally. Uh, why are you not saved? Please save. There we go. So we no longer need to touch the server. We can just work in this API file uh, with our nice router. And what I'm going to do, so I'm not going to, like we're building RSS reader, right? And we need a collection of RSS. Uh, what I'm not going to do, I'm not going to have any database or whatever. We're going to roll in a very stupid way. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say RSS um, list and have an array here. And uh, once we get that, we're going to be saying, okay, const request body. Uh, and we are going to be getting, what do we send there actually? I totally forgot. Uh, was it URL? Yes, it was URL. Okay, so we get the URL from body and we're going to be saying like, okay, if, uh, you know what, it's going to be, I'm going to make it a set, right? And it can actually be const because we're not going to be modifying it. It says list as URL, then um, present added false because it wasn't added, return. And then if it's not there, we're going to say RSS list add URL. Okay. Adding URL, blah, 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 URL. All right. So just, just for the sake of my sanity to test that it actually accepts the URL correctly. Adding URL undefined. Okay, then. Uh, what am I doing wrong? So that sends JSON, right? Uh, this looks like, okay, general response headers, request headers. No, it doesn't have a JSON header. Okay. I have to set it. Yeah, I have to set, God damn it. Fetch. Why, why do you have to be like this? All right, sometimes using fetch is a bit annoying. Keep forgetting that you have to like add stuff manually, which is blech. Okay. I probably can use some third party library that would do that for me, but you know what? Oops, that is not what I wanted. Reload, add, and uh, is adjacent now. Uh, do, 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 request headers. Where is my JSON header? Added true. Cool. Okay, now it works. So there was JSON header missing. Now we actually have the URL and it is there. So if we try to add it again, it should basically say false. Works perfectly fine. All right, so we now got this, uh, which means that we, uh, we actually should send back the new list, right? So because we want to update the UI. And ours, um, what, what did I call it? God damn it, RSS list. There we go. Uh, two, 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 two. And we send back the list so that here, it says new RSS list. Two, two, two. There we go. Add it. So theoretically, as a response, we should now have. Can I can I hide this? Go over you. Yes. There we go. Thank you very much. We don't need that now. So it's for whatever reason empty. Why are you empty? Um, okay. okay. Wait, is it because it's not serialized into the object correctly? Or what's going on here? Ads. So this gives an empty response, but the console shows it correctly. So what am I doing wrong? Okay, express. Does express just not understand set? Um, yeah, okay, that is that is the worst search query that you could do. Okay, you know what? We can we can just cast it to object ourselves, right? Like this. Uh, it's actually not an object. Wait a second. I'm an idiot. It's an array, right? So we don't actually need to do that. We need to do this. There we go. 
and uh, in this case rss lists all right so right now we should actually get that list back right there we go so we finally got our list which is nice uh, which means we can now render this list it means we need to have this over here um let's rss list okay and let's see http test feed com so we have this list now we need to iterate over it and render it here using this ule now the question is how the hell do you iterate in svelte let us see i assume there's some yeah each block each expression as name okay each item as uh-huh all right it seems like exactly what we want each feed uh, no wait um rss list as feed slash each this is what i want to say and this is going to be feed we assume like this so theoretically wait, come on right there we go and if i add another one uh, right because we don't replace it so we actually have to swap them and we're going to say rss list equals new rss list right so in theory if i now do this it just wipes everything god damn it why does it wipe uh, is it just refresh the page or what happens no i guess you cannot i guess you cannot modify the no but that still should work okay that's interesting how do you replace an array in svelte that's a good question uh script yes please export export that class rss list i mean oh you think no but it doesn't matter right that sh so we could do like spread copy but uh do you think that would change anything like i mean let's try oh god damn it i'm an idiot because what we get back is not a new rss list right <laughs> what we get back is an object this is the we get back added an rss list on it and rss list as new rss list and if it was added we have to actually swap it because if it wasn't added then whatever there we go all right cool we got this working um so remove button yeah let's do remove button why not that seems also straightforward yeah it was way easier than that so it was just me being stupid um okay so we got at uh, i guess we can kill those console logs here because we don't really need them anymore and uh, we do console dot was it dot del in express it's another problem i have switching between fastify and all the other frameworks i constantly forget what exactly do you use dot uh, no it's just dot delete okay dot delete uh and we actually want and you know what let's just keep it a post it's not gonna be a traditional rest api just do that um removing url if it has removed true yeah otherwise um so okay i guess this should be the other way around if it's not we say remove false and we just send the list back if i guess we don't actually have to send the list back ah, whatever okay fine um da -da -da. delete right so we just kill it and we send it back okay so now here we're gonna say const remove from list um it's gonna be a function that is a sync and that is so in this case we actually need to say on click right and here we need to pass a handler that is aware of the fit url now the question is how do you do that in svelte let us find out so we got dom events and we'll click uh okay you can literally pass in the javascript there i wonder if that will work um let me think is there an example that shows us how to do that with the parameters doesn't seem so but i mean we can use an arrow function that that's always works right so we can just do this and say what the sh come on editor don't go crazy on me move from list and we can do this right 
So it will generate the new function that is gonna invoke our remove from list with a feed. And it's gonna be our URL. And I'm just gonna copy this stuff and do it. It's gonna be removed. Uh, we actually don't need this comment, neither here nor here. Uh, API Dell. Da, 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 URL and it's gonna be like this JSON removed and that seems correct so in theory we should now be able to add and remove the feeds and that says 200 but for some oh did I forgot to change that <laughs> damn it um yes I forgot removed this is what we want all right so this should be now working right and it works cool uh arrow function is real pain and svelte always closed yeah I, I think that's more of a problem of an extension and out of suggestion rather than like it's just you know the, the problem basically uh even now so this is what's like a month after swell 3 was released when i tried the whole swell 3 with uh, vs code extension on a day one after swell 3 announcement it was a buggy mess. Like right now it's okay-ish. There's some annoyances, but you know, there's still like a lot of polish to be had. But the yeah, the editor support is, this is one of the reasons why I love React so much is because React at its core is just JavaScript, right? So you, you have the JSX syntax, but it doesn't add any specific things. So it's still valid JavaScript, right? Which makes it very easy to work basically with the browser, uh, sorry, with the, editors and it doesn't take too much effort to fix the bugs essentially while here when you have all this kind of additional syntax first of all you have to learn it and second of all it, it brings a lot of the weird out of correct uh, out of suggest issues oh yeah okay uh anyway so we got remove we got adds now we need the refresh method and we also need uh so we got refresh and we also need um a list method so list method should basically just send rss list back and this is actually what we should do on the load right uh so if we add the feed so basically the, the thing right now is if we reload we're going to lose the persistence so which means that we on the load we should uh trigger something so there's there's got to be a Blah, 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 component lifetime something on mount there we go import on mount oh it's just a function like i like this a lot like the fact that you can just you know import a function and this is actually how you do things is kind of cool so we go this on mount so we're here and what we're going to do on mount is we're going to say okay first of all this thing is going to be a sync we're going to say, blah, 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 what we're going to say, we're going to say new RSS list is going to be await fetch API. Um, what was it? List. Then our, our JSON, right? So we're just going to cast this to JSON. I want you to say RSS list, new RSS list. Okay. Uh, whoops, I screwed it up. And theoretically, um, right. So I guess it is empty right now. But if we add some stuff and then we refresh the page, it is over here. Cool. So this works. I mean, like some parts of Svelte is really, really cool. The fact that you can do it as easy as this to reload the data to just assign stuff around and it actually works is, is pretty cool. And there are some rough edges. Okay. Anyway, if we got the list working. Now we want the refresh function which uh, I guess for this one, we would need some RSS um, and I guess yarn, yarn PKG was the yarn website, pkg.com, there we go. RSS, RSS generator, RSS parser. So let's see this one, feed parser. Uh, if any anyone in the chat knows a good RSS parser for JavaScript, do let me know. I mean, otherwise we can probably pick something up. Feed me, uh, okay. So what about this one? Uh, lightweight RSS parser for node and browser. Where's the, here we go. GitHub, please, GitHub, uh, GitHub and GitHub. All right, so we got this one. Uh, six days ago, last commit, that is pretty fresh. 
it uses sync await api which is always great and seems to be quite convenient so let us just do that i guess cool that's that looks nice enough right terminate that npm install rss parser and um, just copy that so import parser from rss parser this is our um, collection of currently subscribed rss feeds right uh, create new rss parser we're gonna have a global instance of parser right and then we're just gonna it title maybe it's a good idea. i mean okay you know what whatever for now it doesn't matter later on we can like you can do additional expansions like you know get the title of the feed and show it nicely in the list but for now it's fine right um to do, 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 do refresh so this is what we want to do and there's going to be a sync and not to forget try catch right uh, now we got the error we're just gonna say next error uh, yes okay, next there we go okay all right so for i'm just gonna use const url of rss list i believe that should work um <laughs> Okay, and oops, const results is gonna be an array, and we're gonna say results push. You know what? I'm just gonna push the whole thing in there. Let's actually see how does that look. Okay, npm run dev. What would happen if you remove the try block? Um, I mean, it won't hurt too much. The problem is that. We're using Express.js here and Express does not understand the synchronous functions right now. So if anything would to fail during this promise, you will not see a response and it will not react on a failure within it. That's why you need this try manual try catch block essentially to handle that error. If you use more modern, uh, or I guess a sync uh, await aware uh, framework like Fastify, it will catch the async errors automatically so you don't have to do that. But you know, with React, it's better to basically do that uh, manually so that nothing silently fails essentially. Okay, uh, we got, uh, right, so we probably need to add an RSS feed. And then we need to call our API refresh route. API refresh. Uh, we don't need the fetch anymore, I think. All right, so we literally get the whole damn RSS feed, which I, I guess this is exactly what we want, right? Okay, cool. Um, I, we might not even need to do anything in the server, really. We can kill that. So essentially, it now comes down just to rendering that thing. Uh, let me think. So first of all, we want uh, some function that will do that for us, right? Const refresh feed. Again, I think. And uh, the only thing that we want to do is essentially content is going to be equal await fetch api refresh right and then we just uh whoops cast it to json and uh so we can we need to use that in two places the first one we literally have our reload button so we're going to say on click it's gonna be refresh feeds and the second place is once we actually uh, reload or once we refresh the our lists we need to do ah uh, right because I cannot actually do it so I need to define that above everything and do that um, so we can do refresh feeds right so we can basically re-trigger the fetching once we add or remove the RSS. Okay, cool. Uh, so add this, add that, and as our refresh, and we actually got a pretty nice object over here. Uh, but we actually have to store it somewhere. Um, feeds con let's call it feeds content, and it's gonna be an object, right? So this is, no, it's an array. So it's an array of feeds. 
Okay, uh, like for now, let us just do, can I do this? JSON stringify its content. So, okay, this is empty. Once we add, we should see nothing. Why is there nothing if it's content? We do update it, right? No, we don't. <laughs> okay, that explains it. It's content, content, there we go. Add, add, and there we go. Cool, so now we render it. That is a very big reload button. Uh, maybe I should move it, I mean, okay. You know what, let's just restyle it a tiny bit and make it class articles actions. Let's call it this way. So it's gonna be here. And then it's gonna be div class articles list. I put it here. So we got articles actions and articles list. Articles actions is god damn it, stop doing that. Um display uh, flex and then um yeah, we also need to adjust articles themselves. Articles list. Um this actually doesn't matter for now. So article display flex, and then we're gonna make flex direction column i think right which there we go okay and if we add it now the button should stay on top perfect i mean you know it's decent enough for now basically styling is something that can be done later okay so now we have array of those objects that are feeds that contain the description uh title i guess in our case we're only interested in title and uh, we just have to render it, right? So this is our content. Yeah. And I guess it's gonna be each slash each. All right, so we're gonna do each uh, feed, uh, feeds content. What was, God damn it, this as feed, okay. So we do that, which means that we're gonna get this feed thing. So the feed item is, we got the title, we got the link, Got description, which means we need to iterate again each uh, feed items as item, right? That is a lot of nested loops, but uh, okay. So we got the items uh, that have title, that have link, and I guess we don't really care about, I mean, we, we got the content as well, right? So we do want that. So I guess we can just do diff over here and be like, okay, so we got fit title, we got item title. Um, for now, I'm just gonna do this, right? And we got item uh, content, was it? I guess we also wanna do the pop uh, iso date, pop date, yeah, iso date, I guess would make more sense. Item iso date. Uh, do we care about anything else? Not really. So we got title, link, is a content, is a date and content. Okay, cool. So if we do that now and I do add, add. All right, that is a complete mess, but <laughs> kind of renders what we want. All right, so we just need to make it look nicer, right? I mean, at least slightly nicer. So let's do it this way. So we got this div here. At a href item title item link. This should be like this. Diff content, and there is diff. Obviously, if we would use some CSS framework or whatever, that would look like twenty times nicer. But for now. Why is a href looks like this? So this looks, did I not close? No, I did close it, right? Oh, that's a, it's a content actually, okay. So we need to render, how do you render HTML here? Um, to do the expressions, HTML elements. HTML expressions, there we go. Uh, it's a, okay, that's, that's, that's convenient. So we can, uh, whoops, that's the wrong one. We can just do that, right? And if we add now, we should see, there we go, cool. 
So I guess we should format this a bit class item class item feed class item link class item content and class item yeah come on date all right um we just copy all of that stuff put it over here and then we got the item tool okay so we got the item which <laughs> display flex flex direction should be row is it row no it's a column actually and then we got item feeds um cat okay you know what screw you let me just do this uh, that is a wrong space bar and this and this and save it okay let's i guess let's edit it here so that it is a bit more visual got this item or is it row actually did I? yeah i did screw it up okay so it should be row we got the row we got the why is it so tiny first of all let's see why is it not the full so i got this svelte thing max we okay right so we need to remove this max width from layout i guess yep kill that okay this looks slightly nicer i guess it will make sense to add max width to this i mean no that looks fine you know what what like again i starting to think about things that don't really matter right now um yes okay so we got this we got this thing which i guess should be padding adding right like 10 pixels or something maybe even 20 just to make it spaced this is item feed i need that anymore item feeds there we go padding right 20 bx okay yeah, it's a bit annoying that you have to redo this whole thing every time, but uh, you know what, whatever. So we got this again, item link. Uh, cool thing is a weight blocks in Svelte like a loading while fetching the RSS content. I mean, the, the way that the Svelte interacts with the code is actually really awesome. I'm really digging it. It's like this is, it just, it's nearly seamless, you know? I reload actually no i can right so it basically resets everything okay uh we're getting there i guess yeah you know what we do we actually want uh fit link flex one right so this will take the full space there we go that looks almost nice so we need uh first of all we need to move the comments thing into the um some sort of a collapsed thingy <laughs> i'm really good at explaining stuff uh we also should probably add an uh h uh, sorry a tag to the feed so a href and it was feed something was it feed url where's my network link it dot link okay and yes yeah, so we got to move content somehow here and then we're gonna parse this date um i think it's to locale string if i remember correctly uh yeah getting there yeah that looks almost nice so we just need to move this comments thing into the block that would basically expand below and I mean, uh, this could be a nice way to introduce a new component, right? So we're gonna go write article svelte. And um, so we, I guess I'm just gonna copy the whole damn thing over here. Uh, so we can kill this tile. We can kill the nav. Uh, question, should the questions in the programming stream be tied? No, you can be casual. Like I don't mind answering whatever the questions you might have. So just ask away. Uh, just know that, you know, I might be distracted while doing all that stuff. Um, export that feed. So we expose the feed as the 
property and we export let's item as the property as well and now we need our so okay we need to actually import article how does it is just import now from okay we just uh do, 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 do. import article from um components article svelte right and what we need to do here is just say instead of all this we just say article and we go feed it's an item item right and then we can just kill all of that and we'll complain about unused css which is very convenient because we can just copy that stuff and paste it over here and we actually don't need that at all okay so in theory if i didn't screw anything up we should now have a nice separate article thingy cool um right so we wanted to do the collapsible content right um, we actually want uh this is the item let's call it item head and then we're going to have item which is also going to be display uh flex right so this is going to be our class uh, item this is going to be our head and this is going to be our content yeah. uh, doo -doo -doo. finished far cry 5 I, I mean the ending is a bit bonkers but uh how do you like just just if you enjoy far cry try the new dawn as well like just don't buy it full price, but it's basically Far, Far Cry New Dawn should have been the uh, final bit of Far Cry 5, in my opinion, because it, it sort of continues on that ending and makes it a lot better. <laughs> okay, um, flex direction column. Is it column in a row? I'm always, always messing it up. Okay, there we go. We're getting there. Now let me think. So we need to say, okay, adding bottom... 20px that looks good and then uh doo -doo 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 -doo. so this is gonna be item content we don't need this padding right actually we need padding top 10px yep that looks kind of okay okay so we need to say that item is padding bottom padding bottom apx and content padding top yeah, that's something like this, I guess. Right, so now we need to be able to collapse this in some manner. Wasn't there this HTML element that was collapsible on GitHub? Um, wait a second, oh, yeah. GitHub web component. GitHub has an amazing collection of really cool web components that they use. No, that's not it. Uh, where was it? I've, I remember I've seen it somewhere. GitHub author, yes, there we go. There's a webcomponents.org and there is, was it fragment elements, details menu? Was it details? Is it details? Here's the question, where's the demo? Is there a demo somewhere? There we go. Yes, exactly, this is what I wanted. Is that is that like a completely separate thing or is it details with a summary? Okay, let's see, MDN details. Uh yeah, okay, cool. We can we can just use that, right? So <laughs> then we don't even have to code anything, which is always great. Class item content. Um and then we can actually use that other thing, which is item dot what was it, content preview or something? Uh where's my network? Refresh items. Content snippets, there we go. Content snippets, uh, does that work? Yep, that actually works, cool. Uh, although there's like a lot of spacing, so I guess we have to cut this down a bit, maybe 10, it's still too much. But if I remove it, I mean, that's, uh, I guess, I guess it's okay. Okay, and uh, we're, I mean, we're basically done here, right? So we got the RSS feed, we got all that stuff. 
obviously if we add like there's like a ton of things we could do reddit rss uh for example um i think there should be a link somewhere right reddit.rss there we go so if we add this and click add it's now gonna fetch reddit but it's gonna add it to the end right so holy shit that is a long preview okay then um let us do this slice zero to i don't know 20 symbols or something okay um so first of all add this second of all add reddit and what we want to do is actually sort the thing by uh date right um i guess we could do that on client because why the hell not so remove list so we do refresh feeds we get the content and the content is all oh, right because we don't actually sort ah right <laughs> Right, okay, because we actually traverse feed by feed, so we need to, I guess, transform it somehow into a better better thing. Okay, uh, I guess item, and then we just go item, means that we don't have the feed here, but it's actually gonna be item.feeds.link so i'm gonna i'm gonna restructure this a bit so we can basically sort it what was the github component uh there's the whoops that is the wrong browser there is a uh, web components.org if you haven't heard about them it's basically everything related to web components starting from tutorial and going to the listings of the component web components from different companies they have these collections and in those collections you can find github elements which includes all the web components done by github um, probably my javascript is blocked here uh what was it was it this one uh where oh, happening i think yeah that should work right uh but yeah basically it's it's here so it's on the webcomponents.org I'm not sure as my browser is acting up a bit, but uh, right, okay. So we can kill that, 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 and kill that. We got our assess reader. So now we need to transform our, whoops, what? Oh, what? I collapsed it and it just went on my other screen. That's an interesting behavior. So we need to transform our feed a bit. So we got this feeds right and uh, it's an array of feeds now um no that's not it this is the content and we'll call it feeds means we are gonna have so we got array of feeds and we want to map them to items and then reduce into one array so i'm gonna say feeds map and it's gonna be feeds and then we're gonna return um yes we're gonna return feeds no, wait, uh, let me think. So we're gonna return feed items. Where's the, wait a second, where's my requests? Let me, let me just do that. I need to see the data structure in front of my eyes. Otherwise I won't be able to, what are you, why is not, where, where's my refresh? Oh, I guess it doesn't reload because yeah, okay. Makes sense. So we got this thing, right? So we got items. So we need to return feed items, but then we need to map each item and say, okay, so I'm gonna return an item plus, we're gonna say that feed is feed, uh, but uh, it is feed without items. So we gotta, oh man, this is a bit messy. So feeds, let's call it const, uh, yeah, right, we can do this. We can do say items and then we can do feed, meta right you can distract it in this way this will take the items and place it in a separate variable and take everything else and create a feed metadata out of it and then we're going to return items that are going to be mapped as item which is going to be again item and then we're going to be feed which is going to be feed meta right uh, so this theoretically should have an array of arrays and now we're going to reduce that accumulate uh, what no accumulator value stop out of suggesting things okay and essentially accumulator uh so we yeah i mean we don't 
So we just return accumulator concat value. And we start with an empty array. I think that should basically do it. Ta -da. And uh, I should, yeah, there you go. Okay, so now we just need to sort it by date. Sort A, B, and we need to do what a iso what was the name of it uh, is an article right iso date um what dumb error i just wrote date god damn it a iso date there was a date comparison method that is basically better than just subtracting it mdn date compare um what was it, it was like local compare or something or am I just forgetting things now? Google Kale, set UTC. I guess I'm just, I'm, I guess I'm, con oh, it was for strings. I'm confusing things, right? So let's just do new date, B ISO date, right? Uh, now the question is, is that the right sort or reverse sort? I'm always screwing those up. Okay, so this is 6.40 a.m. and it sorts 30. That is the weirdest sort ever. No, it is. It seems correct. So it's uh, this actually should be reverse. So B to A, then it's going to sort them from newest to oldest, right? Add, add. And there we go. Yep, that looks correct. So if we add the, whoops. If we add the, why are you not working? Come on. Okay, I guess it doesn't want to work. Right, uh, does it work here? No, it doesn't. What happened to my clipboard manager? Okay, you know what, whatever. <laughs> Reddit dot RSS was it, right? Then just do this, um, HTTP, there we go. I guess HTTPS would be even better. Big ads and there is, yeah, there we go. So Reddit posts are now mixed in together and it's all nicely sorted by date. That is basically it. So we are done here actually. Uh, yes, terminates. Obviously unit tests are not gonna work <laughs> because we didn't actually touch them, but uh, we did everything else and it actually works just fine, which is kind of great. Um, I guess, let me just see, so I, can safely add everything, right? Git adds its status. Yeah, okay, new file, yeah, cool. Git commit minus M, basic RSS reader. Um, okay, I, ah, oh, right, okay. I don't actually have my uh, uh, git status. I guess it didn't, yeah, okay. So let's see, if I go to VSL, and just hope that at least Git works fine with it. Let's see. Uh, add my public keys. Okay, Git status. There we are. Git commits minus M. Basic RSS reader implementation. Okay. Um, yes, passphrase. Whoops. Uh, what was my passphrase? There we go. All right, cool. At least Git works in VSL just fine. So meanwhile, I will be going to the, um, I'm gonna close this stuff. I'm gonna fire up my Chrome where I actually logged into the GitHub. I'm gonna go to GitHub and uh, create a repo and push that. If you guys have any questions or, I don't know, things you wanna, like whatever, if it's development, non-development, games, just anything, just feel free to throw them into the chat. As usual, if you missed the stream or watching the VOD, we have a really nice, um, Discord community, so feel free to join and talk about stuff there. Right, let me see. Sapper, Svelte, three RSS. That is the worst name ever. Um, yeah, yeah, you know what? Let's just go with Sapper RSS reader. You know, I think that's descriptive enough, right? Simple RSS reader with, uh, built with Svelte three and Sapper. All right, um, yeah, cool. Uh, stumbled a video of you about YouTube DL. What was it about? Um, which one do you mean? Like there was there was this project which we built with Electron that allowed you to uh, watch the videos offline basically to catalog the, 
what was it? Crunchyroll, I think. And one of the videos was taken down by YouTube for something. I still don't understand what, because it was literally me talking for 20 minutes about preparations and what kind of libraries we're gonna use. I, if that's what you mean, then yeah, that's that's the thing. So I, I honestly don't know what to tell you. Okay, um, I probably should edit the readme. That sounds like a good idea. I may just be lazy and copy from some other projects. Uh, yes, please, maybe this one. Yeah, so where's my readme? There we go. Okay, I can close this project. So, sub per, uh, well, how did I, I did a description there, but I already forgot what I written. There we go. This is what I want to put in here with Zapper and Svelte 3. Is an introduction to Zapper and Svelte 3. I need to paste in a video here once it's on YouTube. Moldima showing how to use um, Zapper and Svelte 3 to build a basic RSS reader. Related links. Right, Sapper, Svelte, and I don't think we've used anything like right? This shouldn't be important anyway. Useful links, this is fine. MIT, okay, cool. So let me just uh, Sapper and Svelte, Svelte. So we got the Svelte, we got the Sapper. Um, it commits update readme and i think we are basically done did you use child process to control youtube dl um if i remember correctly yes <laughs> you know what let me just have a look it was the um what was it building it was one of the build like the longer courses that i did on youtube building i think it was building electron apps with js actually so we had components uh, episode, I believe. Okay, this is just the components API. Was it an API? Crunchyroll, YouTube. Let's see, uh, parse. No, this was the Crunchyroll parsing. It, didn't I? Okay, I think I actually scrapped the YouTube DL at one point because it turned out it would be easier to just parse everything, but we could try to find the commit where I did that. And there's not that many of them. Um, boom, 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 boom. Implement Crunchyroll login, WebSocket, unuse Lodash. Uh, da, 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 da. Replace YouTube DL. Okay, there we go. This is the replacement. So we can actually have a look at this commit. Okay. So the way it was used, so we got the YouTube DL file over here, which I assume I killed later on. Um, pages, yarn lock. No, I did not kill it. Yes, the video is on my YouTube channel. So if you want, you can just, like it's the building electron apps with JS series. So it should be somewhere there. Let's see, there should be a YouTube DL file somewhere. Where the hell is it? This. Oh, that's definitely not it. What? what? Episode? No. What's happened? Where? Wait a second. Okay. Um. Da -da -da, I guess maybe this one. Browse files. Source API. I remember. I definitely used the YouTube. There we go. There's a YouTube DLJS. And yes, it's just spawned from child process. So in a very straightforward way, uh, just use the binary and catch the STD out and STDR. There you go. All right, um, cool. Wait, wait, let me just <laughs> verify once more that I've actually pushed everything online. I still need to do the VOD to the YouTube and everything. But uh, yeah, that seems to be working. Obviously no tests, no persistence, no anything, but hey, you know, this, um, so, like it's it's actually quite enjoyable to work with Svelte. So I could, I expected it to be worse, to be honest. There is a ton of potential vulnerabilities in different projects. I need to have a look at this. 
me just move that off off the screen no that's not what i wanted to move there we go okay um yeah uh come on okay right that's basically it. so if you guys don't have any more questions then i guess we can wrap this up here again if you have any questions feel free to join discord and just catch me over there i'm pretty much all the time and we'll be more than happy to talk about stuff and uh, yes uh, when i stumbled on the video it was named bpjs yes it was it was before building products with jazz right this was the original title and uh yeah i eventually turned it building x with js because somehow it no longer were products but those tinier live streams where i just did stuff you know so it didn't make a lot of sense but there you go all right guys uh thank you very much for watching i hope you enjoyed the stream and maybe even learned something Svelte 3 is actually quite nice. So with Sapper, there is some rough edges around with the uh, uh, tooling, but hey, it's uh, actually quite good. Yeah, so thanks guys for, uh, <laughs> God damn it. Let me try this again. Thank you guys very much for watching. I hope you enjoy the rest of your week or the rest of your day. And I see you next time, I guess on Saturday for BXJS Weekly JavaScript News Podcast. Bye.